Hi, and welcome to Baseman Projects. In this video, I will be fitting the quick change tool post to the top slide of my lathe. I start by taking the top slide apart and remove it from the carriage. Be careful not to lose any of those small parts and store them properly. On the workbench, I disassemble the whole top slide. The original bolt needs to be removed and will not be needed anymore. I will use this opportunity to clean all the parts and check them for wear or damage. After a little cleaning, the top slide is ready for threading. My cordless drill will be used for power tapping because it's easy and fast. Time to put the quick change tool post on the top slide. The threads match perfectly. What you can't see or feel in this video is that the threads in the top slide are about to tear. It's made from cast iron and way weaker than normal steel. Way too weak for my taste. Maybe a year ago I made this solid tool post out of scrap metal that was lying around. I saw a video about such a tool post and was curious about the benefits. Now I'm glad I made this, because I can use it to work on my tool post. After giving it some thought, I decided to build an insert for my tool post out of solid steel. With this I won't have any problems with bolting down the quick change tool post. I drilled a hole for cutting an M12 thread inside the steel bar. This material is way tougher than the cast iron of the top slide. After drilling, I faced off the end to get a nice and clean surface. I started turning down the outside diameter, for now without a specific measurement in mind. I just wanted a strong shoulder and enough material around the threadings to have a really strong insert.
While the outside diameter is not really important for now, the depth of the cut is. I wanted to have the maximum amount of material to thread the tool post bolt into, but it can't be too high, otherwise it would jam the top slide. Put a chamfer on the edges and gave the part a quick polishing. Then started the parting. I don't like this operation very much. Especially on steel in most cases. Something will go wrong. And here it goes. The end of the blade broke off. After a regrind and some height adjustment it worked. I cleaned the surface and gave the edge a nice chamfer. I need to sharpen this tool before the next use. Right now I don't have the right tool for turning this small inside thread on my lathe. That's why I'm using manual tapping. But the steel is really tough and I switched to a wrench for better control. I don't want to risk to break a tap inside this part, so this will take a while. To finish this, I use a fresh machine screw tab. And this is what it looks like after some deburring and cleaning. The hole in the top slide needs to fit the new insert. I use a chamfer bit to find the center of the hole. That's precise enough for this operation. The first step is a rough removing of material with a 16mm drill.
With my new boring head I will get to the final dimension. The boring bars are unused, but as you can hear the grind is horrible. I need to re-grind all of them. After turning the top side around, it's time to remove the material on the back. This is where the shoulder from the insert will be sitting. I am milling this way too carefully and could have done it in one go. But better be careful than sorry. A screw up could be expensive because a new top slot won't be cheap. Quick check and it fits really nice. Using a needle file I'm adding grooves to the top slide and the insert. This will help to really lock those parts in place with the glue. A quick look after filing in all the grooves. I am using a two component epoxy glue. This glue is really strong and will lock the insert inside the top slide and prevent it from turning. At first I was thinking of machining a press fit, but this comes with a few cons. A press fit will add additional stress to the top slide. Because it's cast iron, I don't want to take any chances in cracking it. And if by chance I need to remove the insert, a press fit will be a lot harder to remove than the glued version. I just need to heat the part up and the glue will crumble. After putting on enough glue, I use some metal stripes as an improvised fixture. This will prevent the insert from sliding out of the top slide. A little bit more glue and then a heat gun will rise the temperature of the parts. This will not only make the glue stronger and cure it faster, it will also make the glue thinner so it will flow into every groove and corner. After the front part has hardened, I added more glue to the back side. You can see that the part is still warm and the glue really flows inside those cracks.
After letting it fully cure, I use a sharp chisel to remove any excessive glue to prevent the top slide from jamming. For the final touch, a little bit of sandpaper to smooth the surface. Time to try it out! With this insert I can tighten the bolt as hard as I can and it won't move or tear. That's it for today. Bye and thanks for watching.